to him, Rabbi, which is, um, which is to say, excuse me, uh, being interpreted, Master, well, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw, and he dwelt in the boat with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless the reading of your word. We pray that you bless the service tonight. Father, help us, for we are a needy people. In the name of Jesus, amen. When we look at the ministry and missions for this month, we look at a work that's needing to be done. I want to encourage you on, on Sunday night, um, we don't have as many visitors. Uh, and as a church family, I want to encourage you find a way to minister, your personal way to minister. So, of course, you want to minister in Sunday school classes and we have teachers. And of course, you want to be substitutes and always willing and work on the ground, but then have away from the church ministry. Uh, people say we want to have church outside the walls. Well, we don't have to cancel church. You are church outside the walls. When Justin Corder leaves here, he is Calvary Baptist Church, just like John Riker is. We represent the ministry. We represent Christ. And we want to carry him along with us everywhere we go. People are watching. People are listening. They're looking for love, and they can't find it in this world. You look on the television, and it's lust and adultery that's being sold on every corner and every commercial. How sad. I don't like going into Illinois, period. Thank you. But I really despise it when you get on the interstate and you see all that smut on the billboards. Yes, That's right. right. A bunch of trash, hellish things, things of the devil. You drive by these places that are full of filth. This world needs a witness. It needs missionaries. And each one of you have a story. Each one of you. And a testimony. I want to encourage you, and I encourage so many people. Please put your stories on paper. I know I've already said it before. Write it down. Write your story down, because one day your, your tongue will be silenced. So who's going to tell your story? My wife and I talk, and you know, when you minister, you don't get, sometimes you'll, you'll talk to people and minister to them, and they don't ask you many questions. I, I was talking uh, to someone, and, and they said, well, nobody ever asked me about my day. And I said, yeah, I understand that. Well, you can't understand what I'm going through. And I said, yes, I can. Not you, but you never asked me how my day was going. And in life, you're you're seeing people who you talk to, and they talk to you more than you respond to them. Why? Because everybody has a story. And Sister Manuel, everybody's hurting. Everybody's hurting. Whether it's young Asa. Or old Pastor Riker, me. Don't let that go to me. Old that. We all have trouble. We're all hurting. See, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust, and all that is so true. But thank God when the rain comes, he's with me. And I've got to share it. If you saw me walking out to my car in the midst of a thunderstorm and I took and we had the umbrella and Steph was there and I we stepped outside and it's thundering and raining I put the umbrella up and I grab her hand and I hold that umbrella over here and her over there you'd think I was a terrible husband because I wouldn't share and if we would have a negative attitude about somebody who wouldn't share an umbrella 
how much more should we have a negative attitude about ourselves not sharing Christ? So this morning, I challenged you to think of someone during the invitation that you wanted to witness to. I hope that you write their name down. The devil's going to give you every excuse. Well, I didn't see them. Well, it wasn't convenient. Well, I forgot. All those excuses and all those circumstances that make you say it's okay not to witness. And you'll come up with them. But be that testimony. Be that testimony. Share the gospel while you have a chance. Take what you have. I watch Eli Dunphy get up here, grab Grandpa's guitar. Use that for Jesus. Use it for him. We're going to go to Humphreys Park so we can use our voices for Christ. Now, we're not going to sing operatic, and we're not going to be the best singers you ever heard, but we're going to do our very best. We're going to be polished. We'll do our very best because we're going to bring honor to him. And so as he's walking along, as Christ walks along, I want to follow him. I want to follow him. I want to follow him into the ministry. I want to follow him through the ministry, and I want to follow him home. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to see my king. I'm ready to kiss this world goodbye. I am ready to be with my Lord and Savior. And boy, it'll be just that fast and faster. I believe a lot of people say it's as quick as you can blink. I believe it's as quick as light will glance off of your eye. I believe it's the speed of light. And we're out of here. You can have my wallet. I'll say it again so all of Facebook has it. You see my wallet, take it. Got my old Ford out there. Take the Ford too. You can have the chickens. Be good to them. They're sweet little birds. Love my chickens. One of them's got a gimpy leg. Be nice to him. It's a rooster. He's got a gimpy leg. But I'm not coming back for him. I'm not coming back for him. Have the house because seven years of tribulation will be the best you'll have it. Isn't that scary? When hell is released across this earth, Spirit of God is not with the spirit of man. You think there's corruptness now. Think when there's no morality. Yes, sir. Evil imaginations everywhere. If there were an ark, they wouldn't even get on it. <laughs> and that'll be the best there is left. That breaks me. Go down to Walmart tonight, and you're going to say, oh, they let the crazies out tonight. How many of you have ever said that? Tell the truth. Oh, look at those hands. Shame on you. Just as I'm no. um, we'll, we'll have opportunity to repent. The sad thing is, it might have been me that was down there. Um, everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. I'm no better than anybody else. So as Jesus walks along and, and, and has a path for me, I'm going to walk with him all the way. Some days it's tough. Some days it's harder than others. But I don't want to miss a step. I just want to keep on. In verse number 36, we see we need to look to Christ. Recognize him for his salvation that he is the lamb. Recognize him for who he is. I feel sometimes like my relationship with Christ falters and fails. It comes up just a little short. Oh, I love him. But it's like the man who got up and his wife said, you don't tell me you love me anymore. And he said, I told you the day I married you, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. How would you like to have that marriage? <laughs> I kind of like it when honey reaches over, whispers in my ear, I love you. Just a reminder. I like that. I 
mountain so we just sit back and say, Lord, I love you. I love you. Hopefully with your spouse, there's times when you look at your crazy but yet perfect spouse and you say, I love you more every day. Hopefully you say that. Do you ever stop to tell your spouse? Well, you should. But how much more should you stop to tell Jesus? Oh, Father. Jesus. Holy Spirit. I love you more every day. I can't get over what you've done for me. I can't get over... Um, look at his name. I can never remember it. Todd Beamer. I always want to say Tom, and I know it's wrong. Grabbing that Coke cart. Talking to his wife. And I can't remember if he got the answer machine or if he actually got to talk to her. Knowing when I shove this cart through that door, we're going down. We're going to die anyway. We're going to save lives today. And grab that and shoved it through that door and that plane went down. And no, only God knows how many lives they saved that day. And the Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And Todd did it and so did the others on that flight that day. But oh, Jesus. Jesus let him beat him. They let him scar him. He let him spit on him. And he had the power to stop him without letting him touch him. All he had to do was say, no. With a word, the power of his tongue. But he didn't. Because he loved Matt too much. He loved John too much. Sometimes we don't follow this isn't true, but we fell out a little bit out of love with him. A little out of adoration for him. Not out of love, but we don't have that passion for the things of God anymore. You ever been there? We used to be passionate for the things of Christ. You're working with children. We had a little boy at camp. What's down there for now? A little boy at camp. And I told you the story before. Act like you haven't heard it. Especially the Johnstons. If you've already heard it, good night. I've told it too many times. Yeah, this little chunky boy. Middle of July. Hot, humid like it is the last few days. Nasty. Nasty. And I had a cat and full ornery voice. A dorm full ornery voice. And then there's this little chunky kid. And he's sweating. And he's sticky. And wet. Come on, man. I want to hold another guy's hand. <coughs> Sam thought it'd be funny, Brother Wayne, that we were walking through the mountains. Montana or one of those, or Wyoming, or I don't know where we are. Wherever there's mountains, we were walking through them. Sam thought it'd be cute. He'd walk up and grab my hand because I was holding hands with my girls. Now that I was not. Sam slipped his hand in and started walking beside me like that. So I just ratcheted down on him. Oh, 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 which I can still do. Yeah. What Sam doesn't like is this. <laughs> you dads know this? The thumb to the knuckle. And if that's not hard enough, then you twist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Sam probably grabbed my hand. So I squeezed down. He was about 16, 17 years old. And I took a couple more steps. He said, I looked at him and said, I bet you won't do that again. He gets up, comes up, sticks his hand in it again. Now this is like a park. There are people walking around. I have a 17-year-old boy there. <laughs> it grabs my hand like he's going to hold my hand. And so I grab it and I Crank down again. This time he fell down. Sister right, he fell on his belly. But I didn't stop walking. I just drug him. 
and he just blows up. Oh, man. It was hilarious. And I hadn't heard him. Face of people, don't don't start coming. Oh, I can't believe how many you are. I ain't hurt the boy, he's fine. You fine, Sam? Say yes. And so <laughs> the boy's fine. He's fine. <coughs> this little boy, little chunky dad, still standing. He'd stand up against me. Or lean against me. I like that. I want my space. I'm a Baptist. Look at you people. Look at where you're sitting. They said, six foot distancing for all churches. <laughs> like, that's a problem. <laughs> We're skipping every other pew anyway. We're Baptists. But he always wanted to get right against me. And you feel that sweat running down your arm and know it's not yours. And you go, ah, get away. He'd hold my hand. Get away. So finally, by the end of the week, I'd pushed him away enough. Now he wasn't even trying. Made me happy. Felt good about myself. Sweaty little kid. So the next week came around. Here's the thing. He didn't choose my cabin again. You know why? Because I proved I didn't care about him. He didn't ask for me. Ever. He was in a dorm with another guy. The other guy came up and he was mad. He said, you know Billy? I said, yeah. Kid hung on me all the time. Yeah, he holds my hand every day. I said, I asked him to get old. He said, well, I'm really mad about some other things that are going on in his life. And he started unwinding them and telling me what was going on in Billy's life. You know why Billy never told me? Because I didn't care. That's heartbreaking to me because I can't redo that relationship. We ought to have a relationship with Christ that is a daily, passionate relationship. I can't wait to get up in the morning and talk to him. And if you can wait, you ought to ask yourself why. Why don't I want to talk to the Lord? Why wouldn't I want to talk to him? Why wouldn't? If I am a Christian, why wouldn't I want to talk to my Savior? Why wouldn't I want to read his word? You don't want to read his word. You don't want to pray. You don't care. Either you're backslid or maybe you're not even saved. You say, oh, you know, once saved, always saved. Yes, I understand that. And I truly believe that. However, I lived a long time saying a lot of words, but never receiving Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. All I said is name. But so did the devil's. I believe in him, but so does the devil. I never received him. It's a big difference. That day I confessed with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believed in my heart that God had raised him there from the dead, repented of my sins, asked, Father, forgive me. He gloriously saved me. I had a passion for him. I had to declare his presence in my life. I had to declare his moving in my life. I declare his blessings in my life. And I ought to declare his forgiveness in my life. I ought to tell everybody around me, praise the Lord, let me tell you what happened today. Praise the Lord. So tired of Christians who are Debbie Downers. Man, we got a heavenly home. You walk around, who wants that? No wonder people aren't running to be saved. Even the devil knows how to lure people. Show them that drinking's fun, even though 88,000 people die every year in the United States from alcohol. And only, I think, 36 die from guns. That's always my quote, you know, it's guns. Makes it look fun and happy. I have to tell you, I have stuff to be happy about. God given me a, has given me a lot of blessings. I declare it in my life. I declare it's moving. And I ought to put it on paper or on the interwebs so it can't be forgotten. So it's always there. There's a track back in the back. A young man by the last name of Boyd. I went to his daddy's church. His daddy's a pastor. I went to his church when I was on tour group. 
as a uh, teenager. Um, Skylar Manuel always said those were back in the days when I was cool, and uh, that's long since passed. He said I wasn't cool by the time I think I get 20. He said that's when he was cool. So if I wasn't cool at 20, now I'm really not cool. But I went there and the boys remembered me and the daughters remembered me, big fan. I got word years later as a youth pastor, assistant pastor here, one of the boys has cancer. Pray for him. I diligently prayed for him. But he died. Oh, God healed him. He's more whole now than he's ever been. His daddy sent me some tracks. There's a picture on it. And it's his story. You go through it and you see his testimony. The last thing he could do for the cause of Christ is to see somebody else get saved. Even in hard times, we still share God's blessing of salvation. Even in heartbreak, we still share God's blessing of salvation. We share his moving, his blessing, his forgiveness. The Bible teaches us that behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. What should we behold? We should behold his atonement, his forgiveness, and his compassion. Follow Jesus. Missionaries, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. We have folks all over the world following Christ. More that want to go, but they can't find funding. You know what is a neat goal at Calvary for you? A neat goal is to make it so you support one missionary all by yourself. You say, well, how much would that be? You come talk to me after service if you're interested. Wouldn't that be a great thing to be able to say, I give enough to support one missionary personally. Every month I give that much. You say, well, that would take a lot of sacrifice. Yes, it would. You'd have to give some things up. You might have to switch from black rifle coffee, which I really like. The Folgers. <clears throat> Surely there's something else we can give up, like tires on the car. <laughs> um, but could we give that up for the souls of men? Don't be ashamed if Brother Tony wanted to go back to Haiti but couldn't afford the flight. We're enjoying the blessing on this side. So we show his atonement, we show his forgiveness, and we show his compassion, and we send those where we can't go to do the same. You know, we look at this wide web, and I'm not going to try to get through the sermon tonight. We look at this worldwide web and all the smut and garbage on it. Let's take it over. Let's just take it over. You say, well, they censor us. You know, as far as I know, they've not censored one of our messages from Calvary yet. Not one. No, we don't have thousands of followers. I wish we did. We have 225, something like that, on Facebook that follow us. And a lot of people comment. And then we share it, and it gets around. And we get all these things. We get hits on YouTube all the way to China. Can you imagine that? China. You know how hard it is to get a missionary into China? We're giving hits in Russia. Praise the Lord. What's that tell us? We're missing an opportunity. We've got to take an opportunity. Follow Christ. Listen to those who know him. In verse number 37, listen to those who know him. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Know him. Listen to those who know him and are known by their relationship with him. You know, we need to get with other folks who love the Lord. Set some standards for friendships, young people. Look at me real good. You young people, look at me. You've got to meet the standard. 
Bible says, don't be a friend with an angry person. And it has, what fellowship have light with darkness? And those are all the negative sides. But here's a positive side. And the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So you find someone like Mrs. Ball. And Gracie would go over there and crochet. Is that what Mrs. Ball did? And crochet with Gracie. And they talk together. Gracie has no more chance for that. But she took an opportunity to get what she could from her counselor. Unfortunately, we have some folks who never want to grow old. If you refuse to grow old, how are you going to teach the younger generation? We fight it with all we have. Oh, the older generation has wisdom that just beams from them. Um, as an older generation, you look for the opportunities to help children. I'll never forget being Paige flopping down on the floor, and that's the best way to put it. He'd have those canes up over his head as he'd get down. Brother Mauer sitting beside me. Brother Dawson talking to me. Oh, get around people who love Jesus. Don't let him and his presence pass you by. When God is moving, don't cynically second-guess the Spirit. Don't cynically second-guess the Spirit. You'll have opportunities to pass out tracks. I told you just last week that I reached for a track and I had a t-shirt on or a polo shirt on. Bethany, I think, said, and she's the she's the big one in our family. You got a track. You got a track. Give them a track. Give them a track. You, we have a track, and I give them track. The girl leaves more tracks than a rabbit, and she asked me, said, "You got a track? Let's give them a track." And I reached, and I had a polo shirt, lousy polo shirts, no pockets. I believe God laid that person on our heart for that time and I missed it. I missed it. When the spirit moves, you move too. Listen to men. Look for their counselor. Counsel, but follow Christ. When their speech does not follow this, you quit listening to them. You're going to minister, minister for Christ when your friends don't match up to the Bible. Who wants to confront them? But who has to? Who has to confront them? See, we don't like rebuke. I don't like that. I don't like rebuking people. But Christ in his ministry confronted people with their sin. Let me say this while we're on that. Facebook on their uh, feed, their news feed, that's not the place to do that. That's not the place to rebuke them. You go, you find them, send them a message. Let them know, I sent this privately because I didn't want to embarrass you. Now they'll still get mad a lot of times. I do cuss text messages. Bad thing about testing me on your text message, I take a screenshot and then I save it in a personal file. It's there. <laughs> you can't undo it. But that was even from a private message. But when speech doesn't add up to the word of God, I'd much rather walk away from a man or a woman even a friend, because I rebuke them, then walk away from the old book. So Steve, we've had to do it. Hated it, but we've had to do it. And then in 41, we see that we should seek for others. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah which is being interpreted the Christ. What's our goal? To go out and find others and say, I know Jesus. 
I've met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's no one like him. There's no greater life than the life of serving him. I know Jesus. I've met the Master. Isn't that exciting to you? Why don't you tell me that? Why don't I tell more people? So what did they do? They went to tell others, we've met Jesus. Go to those that you know. Here's a good thing for you to do in your ministry. Start with those people you know. You care about them. You don't want them to go to hell. Don't be ashamed of your faith. Wouldn't it be a shame if we're so ashamed of our faith and so scared about what they would do that it would be worth them going to hell over it? See, when I was getting saved, I said, saw my dad up front, saw others up front, and I said, Lord, how disappointed are they going to be in me if it means embarrassing my family and embarrassing these people? I'll just have to go to hell. And I meant it. I told the Lord that. And that day, I, he dealt with my heart. Brought me to the realization there's no one in the world worth going to hell for. And I don't care what you think of me. If you could get saved, it'd be worth it. It would be worth it. Go to those that you know. Who did these men seek out? Sought out those who they knew. Seek out your relatives. When we did the play, some of you came to it. And one of the lines in the play is, well, they all dress or something to the effect of everything. I have family members that come to our reunion. They all dress different, but I think they're religious, but they never talk about it. Wouldn't that be a shame if some of your relatives didn't know what you believed? Go to those you know. Go to those you love. If you aren't telling, you're falling short. The Bible teaches us, be ye a witness. Be ye witnesses. Be ye witnesses. You've got to do it. This is your call. Your call. God forbid that we ask missionaries to do what we're not willing to do. Seek opportunities to find people. Look for them. Look for the chance. It was wonderful testimony. Sam has this great mission field, but not all ponds are like that. He's at a pond now where the fish are coming to him. That's fantastic. They're jumping in the boat. Woo -hoo! Wouldn't that be great to go fishing unless they're those flying carp? Um, that'd be great. They just jump in the boat. Woo, I'm done fishing. And there's only caught fishing. You just caught catching. Sam says that. These guys are coming to him. He's a Christian. They call him Preacher Sam. Some of you wouldn't like that, though, maybe at work. If they started calling you the preacher or holy roller, take it as a compliment. Yeah, that means my testimony's out there. Praise the Lord. Preacher Sam. But I want you to know, most of the fields aren't like that. You've got to cast. You've got to cast. You've got to cast. You've got to cast. And Andy, if you're like me, you've got to cast a whole bunch. Some days it's real dry. <laughs> but every once in a while you get a little nibble. Somebody said, could you tell me more? Sometimes you find a soul who's hungry. Brother Martin. Oh, no. <laughs> I like an old bass. You ever see a bass laying up on the bank, near the bank? You ever see that? And you just take that hook. I did it at your pond one time. And I just kept smacking that bass with this hook, running it in front of its face. It just laying there. I don't know if it's blinking. Do, do fish blink? I don't think they blink. I don't know. Anyway, I do know if you ever get attacked by a shark, poke him in the eye. But that has nothing to do with the message. I run that hook in front of him, and in front of him, and in front of him. Finally, you annoy him enough, he bites it. You know what? I don't want to annoy people about Christ, but I don't want to be persistent. 
I want them to always know if they need me, John Riker has the word. He has the answer. He has the answer. He has what my hungry soul needs. And then bring them. I don't want us to lose sight of my signs, and I know they've hung up there for years. But every car is a bus, and every seat is an opportunity. Each one of you have a bus ministry if you have an open seat. Or borders, you're out of luck. You need to get a bigger car. If we have open seats, we ought to be bringing people. Little children. Watch. Joe's little granddaughter. Is it granddaughter? Comes with him? Or great granddaughter? Oh my goodness, what a treasure for him. Gets to bring her in here. Little girl sits up here. Man, I want my own Bible. Or Daddy, I want my Bi I want you to buy me a Bible. Why? So I can take it to church with Nana. <sighs> Folks, I don't know how much better it could get than that. Bring them. Seek them, tell them, and bring them. The disciples went a step further. In verse number 46, 46, he said, come, inferring, come with me. I believe it was inferring, hey, come, not just go, come on, come on, come with me. I'm going on a path that you need to be on. Come with me. Come and see. If you still don't want to seek, you won't find. If you don't go, you won't return to rejoicing. And if you don't bring some, who will come? How will they get here? Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you help us.